Hello everyone, so in our RE lesson today we're going to be looking at the sacred and special books related to Judaism and that is the Torah. So your knowledge quiz today is available on your home learning page if you wish to access it there or you feel free to pause the video here and copy down your questions. Uh, so pause the video here if you need to and you've got six questions, three recapping from the last unit and three from last year. So pause the video here whilst, um, whilst the um, questions are on the screen and press play once you're ready to see the answers. Okay, so the name of the Christian holy book is the Bible and question two is split into two parts. They are the New Testament and the Old Testament. The type of literature included within it includes all of the options that were given to you, laws, stories, poetry and history. Pesach is known as Passover, the festival remembers the exodus of Jewish people from Egypt, and the name of the special service that celebrates it is Seder. Well done if you got all of those. Don't worry if you did forget a couple, um, but do make sure to make some edits on your work before proceeding. So continue watching if you're ready to uh, carry on with our lesson. So we are examining the theme of sacred and special books today and this is one of the themes that we have explored so far in year five and it means that uh, books and texts that are significant and important or related to religious tradition. They uh, are devoted to a deity or religious ceremony or use and they are treated with immense respect. They are significant as they tell their followers how to live their lives, how to work together as a community within the religion and with others, how to be a good person, how to connect with the divine as well as share spiritual experiences. So an incredibly important theme for us to be exploring today. And before we investigate the Torah even further, I wanted to recap with you the Vedas. So what can you remember about them? Pause the video here while you have a think about that. Okay, so I wonder if you remembered any of this knowledge. So they are a collection of hymns and other religious texts such as poems, prayers and myths. They are one of the oldest strands of religion in the world with written texts and there are four of them in total. You have Rig, the hymns, Yajur, which are instructions, Sama, melodies and songs, and Atava, hymns and incantation. And also let's recap the Bible. That was the last um, special text that we looked at. What can you remember about the Bible? Pause the video here while you uh, cast your minds back. A bit easier this one because we did cover this in our knowledge quiz. So it's the source of Christian belief and teaching. It's split into the Old and New Testament. It was written 1500 years ago over a long period of time by 40 different authors. Remember that, that might come in help uh, useful later. It is split into chapters and the shorter sentences called verses, which look like this. So we actually practice using this skill in our lesson. So what is the Torah and what does it contain? So I actually have an example Torah that I'm going to take a look at with you just now. So I have got my uh, Torah here. Now it is very small. You can see compared to my hand just how small it is. Um, and this would not be used um, in a religious service. And we'll look at why in just a moment. Um, so just before we actually learn even more information about it, I wanted to show you this example um, so we could explore it together. So Torah actually means teaching. And you'll see here that it's dressed with something here. And this is called a mantle. Now, what do you think that this is for? So have a think to yourself for a moment. Okay, and it is to protect the Torah because the Torah is a set of scrolls, as we'll see in just a moment. And it symbolizes its significance. So even looking at this mantle tells you that there's something important is inside it. Now, what do you notice? on the mantle itself. Do you see any special details? And if you see any details, what do you think their meaning could be? Well, I hope that you spotted that we have a crown on the mantle. And the crown is actually a significant symbol within Judaism. And it's associated with scholarship, devotion to studying and reverence towards the Torah. So it's incredibly important, really adds to that symbolic meaning of the mantle. You may have also noticed some other details as well. You may have noticed that we've got some uh, writing here. Do you know what language that is? That's Hebrew. And we also have the Star of David, which is uh, an important Jewish symbol. What do you notice about the colors of the mantle? Well, they're very rich, 
colors. It makes it look incredibly valuable because it is incredibly valuable to uh, the Jewish religion. So I'm going to remove the mantle from it now. And then you can see that we have our scrolls here. We can see that the top part here is slightly different from the bottom detail underneath. Now, how does this compare to other um, um, important texts that we've seen um, in other religions? So you may have noticed that because it's a scroll, not a book, it is, um, you may have spotted some differences compared to maybe when, with the Bible, which is a book. And you can see that this is how it's unrolled here. Now, you may be able to make out uh, on the scrolls. I don't want to touch it because in Jewish tradition, you do not touch the paper of the Torah. Uh, what do you notice about the way that it's written? You may be able to make that out. And just like with the mantle, it's written in another language. It's written in Hebrew. And that is the original language that the Torah was written in. And you would read it rather than from left to right as we read our books. You would read it from right to left. And we can see that this one has been typed, whereas um, what a Torah that would be used in a synagogue as part of religious service would be used, uh, would be handwritten. Okay, so that's my example of the Torah. Uh, very small uh, example there. And I'll just put that back on just to uh, protect it now. So we're going to find out a little bit more information about it just now. So even though we've looked at some of the key features of the Torah, I really want to give you some more information about it now. So the Torah, as we've established, is the sacred text of the Jewish people. And according to Jewish tradition, the Torah is the word of God, which was dictated to Moses, who then wrote it down for the Jewish people. And because of this, the Torah is very holy and important to the Jewish religion. And you can see uh, a Torah that would be used in a synagogue in the picture uh, just on the right of the screen, obviously much larger uh, and with really ornate uh, scrolls. Almost all Jewish people believe that God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. Now, hopefully, um, you can remember the Ten Commandments and which religion we have studied that they also appear in. Can you name any of the Ten Commandments? Okay, so here are the Ten Commandments again. Uh, here's our list. Uh, you can pause the video here while you take a look at them, but the Ten Commandments are there. And the contents of the Torah. So the Torah is the foundation of Judaism. It's the most basic and important of all the Jewish texts. All other Jewish texts are then based on the Torah and the values within it. And as I said earlier, Torah means teaching, and that is because it is what God taught to the Jewish people. And it's made up of five different books. And interestingly, these five books are found at the beginning of the Bible. And you can see that we have a table just on the right hand side, which explains the contents of each of the five books, as well as its Hebrew name and its English name. So we can see we've got Bereshit, which is Genesis, as we would know it, um, as uh, you may be familiar with hearing it in the Bible. Um, Shemot. Uh, which is Exodus, which is the story of the Jews going out from slavery in ancient Egypt, and uh, Genesis or Bereshit is the uh, creation of the world. Vaikira or Leviticus deals with the religious rules and regulations. Bamidba or Numbers uh, is the English name, continues the story of the Jewish people wandering the desert. And Devarim or Deuteronomy is a long speech given by Moses to the Jewish people shortly before his death. So, Thinking to what I've just said, what similarities, maybe even what differences are there between the Bible and the Torah? Pause the video here while you have a think about that. So the first five books of the Torah are also found in the Christian Bible. That is one thing, strong common theme between them. But the New Testament, however, of the Bible is the Christian contribution and is not found in the Torah. So at that point, with the New Testament, that is very different um, from the Jewish belief with the Torah. And also, it's interesting to think now, what are the differences and similarities between the Torah and the Vedas? Pause the video here while you have a think about that. So the Hindu Vedas are written in four compositions or parts. And the Torah has five books, so they're written in sections. That's something that they have in common. 
But of course, and the Vedas, as we've already covered, have the Rig Veda, the Yajur, the Sama, and the Atama. Whilst the Torah contains rules, it's different to the Vedas because it largely focuses on stories. So there are some common themes between them that they contain, both have rules in common, but the Torah contains more, uh, largely focuses on stories. Whereas the Vedas have lots of different themes. The Torah is written in Hebrew, which you saw before. It's much more clear on this screen now. Uh, and it's the oldest of the Jewish languages. And it contains lots of instructions about how Jewish people should live. And altogether, there are 613 commandments. And they tell Jewish people how to pray, what to eat, and which uh, festivals to celebrate. It was originally passed on by word of mouth, but later written down. And the scroll itself... Now remember this, this is why it's in bold, this is Sefer Torah. So who wrote the Torah? Well, the Talmud, which is the Jewish book of law, holds that the Torah was written by Moses. Have a think now, how does that compare to the Bible? Okay, so I'm going to play a clip for you just now. And while you watch the clip, I want you to have a question in mind. How is the Torah treated with great reverence and respect? So how is it treated with great reverence and respect? So watch the video with that question in mind, listening out for those key points. When you're Jewish like me, you try to live life by God's commandments in the Torah, the first five books of Moses. Every synagogue has its own Torah scrolls. Each one is handwritten in Hebrew, just like the original. There are 304,805 letters in a Torah scroll, and each page has 42 lines. We believe Moses wrote down God's word in the original Torah scroll. All the other sins have been handscribed in the same way. A spelling mistake or a badly shaped letter can ruin the whole thing. Mark Michaels, whose Hebrew name is Mordechai Pinchas, is a sefer. That means he's specially trained to write and repair Torah scrolls. I'm fixing a Torah that's been damaged. They had a, an accident and ripped the old one, so I've, I'm replacing it. And um, I'm having to write it in the style of the original scribe, which his writing is very different to mine. Very different to mine. Fancy twiddles on it, and I can't. I've stopped myself. Mark first started studying 20 years ago as the apprentice of another scribe. I was his apprentice. It's kind of like being a Jedi, but, but with a quill. You have to study. All the books are over there, so in, in the corner there. You, you have to study all those. You have to know when you're making the right decisions about how you write and what's correct and what isn't correct because um, that's what makes it kosher it's the best thing I mean, it's really exciting because you don't get this opportunity very few people are scribes you, you know because of all the training it's very hard to do it takes mark up to two years to scribe an entire torah from scratch everything has to be kosher which means it meets jewish rules the reason the torah is handwritten is that actually is to do with the fact that the commandment says Ukataftam and you will write them. You will not paint them, print them, do anything it says. You will write them. But the main law is to actually find a child who is neither too clever or too daft um, and ask them to read the letter. So if the child reads the letter correctly, then it's kosher. So it doesn't matter what the rabbi says, it doesn't matter what the scribe says, it's what the child says, they're the most important. So I hope you found that clip really interesting. So I did ask you to think about a question before we watched it. How is the Torah treated with great reverence and respect? So take a moment now just to collect your thoughts on that. What did you see in the video? So the Torah is handwritten in Hebrew, just like the original. And a spelling mistake or a badly shaped letter can ruin it because it would change the meaning. And only specially trained people can repair or fix a Torah. 
So your first activity now, independent one, you have some key words at the top of your page. Sacred, Holy, Moses, Judaism, five books, Old Testament, Hebrew, and Sefer Torah. You're going to answer three questions for me. What is the Torah and what are its contents? Such as what does it include, its language, etc. Is it similar to any other religious text? Which one and why? And what is the name of the scroll? If you did miss any of this, you're not too sure, then please watch the video back. Um, but make sure to have a look at those keywords because they may just prompt you and make sure to just tick them off once you've used them. So you may access this work on your home learning sheet or you can pause the video here and copy it down into your book. But press play once you're ready to continue with the rest of the lesson. So we know that the Torah is treated with great reverence and respect, and we want to investigate further into how is it actually cared for. So where is it kept? Well, in a synagogue, uh, the Torah that would be used in a religious service would be kept in a synagogue, and in a synagogue it's kept in the holiest place, which is the Aaron Hakodesh, or called the Ark. And the Ark is usually wooden and has a curtain or a door, and you can see it just on this picture here. So within the synagogue, in the holiest place. And then storing the Torah, so above the Torah is the Ner Tamid, which is Hebrew for eternal light. And you can see it's this lamp. And this lamp burns perpetually in Jewish synagogues above or near the Ark. So just take a moment here. Why do you think that the Ner Tamid could be significant? What do you think it represents or what it means? Why might it be there? And that's to remind the congregation in the synagogue of the holiness of the Torah scrolls that are stored within the ark and calls to mind God's presence and his care for the Jewish people. That has a real symbolic meaning to the congregation of the synagogue. And it's treated with respect when it's in use. So it's a ritual object. It's clothed in an embroidered cloth which, uh, fabric called the mantle. And its scrolls are not actually touched. And instead, they are placed on um, the beamer or the bimer, a raised platform. And a yad, which you can see in the picture, uh, which is a pointer, is used instead of a finger. So you would never get somebody touching the scrolls with their finger. They would use a pointer. So have a moment here and reflect. How does this compare to the Bible and the Vedas? How is this different or the same? And some other facts about the Torah. So each scroll is dressed in beautiful covers, has orna silver ornaments and bells. Once a scroll is too worn out to be used, it must be buried just like a person. And before the Torah is read within a synagogue, it's taken in a procession and held so everyone in the room can see it. Each week at the service, a separate section of a Torah is read, and it would take you an entire year for the Torah to be read aloud, and it's the length of a football pitch. When the Torah has been read through, the Jewish people celebrate the festival of Simchat Torah before a new cycle begins. And if the Torah is dropped, the congregation must fast for a day. Now I'm going to play you a second clip. So I want you to look out for in this clip, I find this one really interesting. What routine is followed if a Torah is to be used in worship? And what symbols of respect can you see? Respect and reverence is a really strong theme when, studying, uh, when learning about the Torah. So what other symbols of respect can you see in the clip? The Torah scroll is treated with great respect. So it has clothes like a queen or a king. It has wonderful silver crowns and it has this special rope. Now we undress it on Saturday morning during our service and also some synagogues have services on Monday and Thursday morning as well when you would also undress the scroll in order to read from it. Hagba means lifting up. And it's a moment when someone lifts up the scroll so the whole community can see the section which is going to be read. You would show all directions so that everyone can see it. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Va'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha, v'chol levavcha, u'v'chol nafshecha, we read the Torah from right to left, and we read it using something called a yad, which means hand in Hebrew. And as you can see, there's a little hand 
carved at the end of this, and we use it to point at the letters as we read them. We don't want to touch the parchment, the stuff that the scroll is written on, directly with our fingers. And that's one of the reasons we also dress the scroll, so that when we're not using it, it's well respected. It's in its special arc, which is where the scroll lives, where the scroll is kept. The book is never finished. You can roll up the scroll, but really the scroll continues in all those conversations we have about what does this mean and how does it affect my life. Okay, so hopefully you spotted lots of symbols of respect being used there. The yard, the way that the, um, the Torah is uncovered and so on and held up for uh, the congregation to see. So now you have your second activity. So first of all, I want you to think about what is the most special item you own? How do you keep it safe? And how would you feel if it was damaged? Now, if I was answering this question, I would think about my most special item, I think, is a watch that my dad gave me a couple of years ago. And I keep that safe because um, I keep it safe in a special box. Uh, so it is uh, hidden away so I know it won't get um, won't get damaged and I know exactly where it is um, and I would feel incredibly upset if that was damaged because it has a lot of sentimental meaning and it reminds me of my dad and my family. So I'd love to hear what your ideas are for what's your most special item, it could be anything and how you keep it safe and how you'd feel if it's damaged. Then two more questions to answer, how is the Torah kept safe, respected and cared for? And what is the symbolism of the near Tamid? So have a think about that keyword, where have you seen that? And make sure to use the keywords that are on the top of your page. So you may pause the video here if you want to copy down these questions um, for your book, or you may uh, want to uh, take a look at these on your home learning page. And finally, there we ha may have an additional challenge for you. So using the notes you have taken today and any additional research you may wish to complete, you can create a non-fiction information page about the Torah. Don't forget the key features of information text, such as captions, images, subheadings, and different sections. And make sure to include comparisons between the Torah, the Bible, and the Vedas as well. So here I have um, an example of what an information text could look like and all and the different layouts that you could use. So it'd be really lovely to see you using the information you've collected today and applying it to a project such as this. However, if you are finished with your learning today, we have some final questions for you to have a think about. So a knowledge quiz, let's see how we got on today. So first question is, what is the name of the scroll? Question two, which building is it kept in? Question three, what is it kept in? And finally, what does the light above it represent? So pause the video here if you haven't already had to think about those answers. I am going to show you the answers now. So the name of the scroll itself is called the Sefer Torah. It's kept in a synagogue. It's kept in a cupboard called an Aaron Hakadosh and the light above it represents the presence of God. So I hope you found that really interesting today, uh, learning lots of information about the Torah, and would love to see all of your work uploaded onto Seesaw to see how you got on. Take care everyone and enjoy the rest of your lessons. Bye-bye.